Today's reference photo is from Warbling in the Woods on Instagram. You should check out his feed. A lot of gorgeous birds on there. This one is a cerulean warbler. Before you begin your final painting, I recommend that you do a series of little watercolor sketches of your bird. Okay, the first layer is the white, and that is a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna with a lot of water. What we want to do here is basically cover all the white areas with this light mixture. You can keep it a little darker at the bottom of the bird, and it gets a little lighter as it goes up. And there's the white under the throat area. And then we're going to add a touch of queen gold, not too much, under the beak area and at the top of the breast. Then with a mixture of ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, we're going to begin to add in with light, tiny brush strokes. We're going to add in that little blue collar in the throat area. You can let it bleed a little bit into the white by allowing the uh, blue pigment to touch the white area. I'm going to take the cerulean blue and it goes across the top of the head and it goes down the wing a little bit. Then cobalt blue as it goes down the head. And let the colors just bleed together right there on the paper. The darkest spots on the bird are represented with indigo, which is a very dark blue, almost black. So basically what we're doing is we're building this painting up in layers. The first layer is just getting in the major shapes, and then we go back and we add details, of the markings on the bird using a mixture of indigo, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and ultramarine blue. The tail, underneath the tail feather there, that's actually a brown. And we've done that with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Putting some more cerulean on the bird's head. Just letting the colors bleed together right there on the paper. Actually trying to lift some of that blue out of the back of the neck there because it's gotten a little too dark. I didn't mean to let it bleed completely, you know, together there. There's two ways to lift pigment out. One is by taking a damp, clean brush and going over the area and then cleaning your brush and going over it again. And the other is to dab it with a paper towel. You first want to try the brush method because sometimes if you dab it with a paper towel, it kind of messes up your painting. ultramarine blue that I added next to the indigo. And the painting is still fairly wet, so the colors are still bleeding together, which is what I want at this point. The 
beak of the bird is actually a muted purple. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a touch of rose matter. The tip of the bird's beak actually has a little bit of gold to it. And I use the Quinn gold there. It kind of bleeds into the rest of the beak, but that's okay. That's how it looks in the photo too. With the watercolor, because it dries so much lighter than when it first goes on, you're constantly going back and correcting the values. So I have made this dark area darker again as it dried light. The bird's eye is actually brown, and I've done this with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Adding a little bit to the tail, bottom of the tail feather there. The legs of the bird, like the beak of the bird, are a muted purple which is the burnt sienna, the ultramarine blue, and a touch of rose matter. And I'm using this watery mixture also to add a little bit more shading to the bottom of the bird. The bottom of his breast there, it helps to build out the roundness of the bird when you add the shadows in. Adding a few more little details. The painting is drying a little bit, so the uh, details that I'm adding aren't bleeding in as much. And that's okay. At, that, at this point, that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to add just a few little brush strokes. It's always a balance between adding too much detail that your painting just loses that fresh, vibrant look. But you want to add enough detail to keep it interesting. The branch is really fun. It's a mixture of a lot of different colors. It's basically burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, but we've also added a touch of rose matter in spots because it's kind of a warm brown. And there we're adding a little bit of green that I've mixed up with some of the blues and the Quinn gold. I'm just dabbing it in here and there. And it all kind of bleeds together on the paper. The colors are just blending together right there on the paper. If you want your branch to rebrown, it's important to add shadow on the bottom of the branch. And if you do that while it's still nice and wet, it'll just kind of bleed and blend into the um, other part of the branch, making it kind of naturally look round. There's also a little bit of a shadow along the top of the branch, but it's much lighter, but you do want to put that in also. Just add a few little details. I don't want my branch to be so detailed that it detracts the viewer's eye from the bird itself. Going back and correcting some of the values to keep them dark. Now we're putting in little feathers with the indigo. Adding in the claws of the bird now, and mind you, that branch is completely dry now. If it weren't, um, when I painted the claws over it, they would just blend right in. You have to add a few darker shadows where you see them in the photo on the bird's legs. Continue to add a few more details, a few more feathers.
adding a very light wash of Quinn Gold in certain areas just to round the bird out a little. Two more dark spots on the branch. The center of the bird's eye, you can actually see the dark pupil of the eye in the photo reference. So I'm adding that here with a very dark mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I also put a little rim around that outside of the bird's eye because that's what I saw in the photo reference. Using that dark to add a few more shadows in the bird's claws where I see them. Okay, and now that eye is completely dry. It is really important to note that at this point that eye is completely dry. I am using the tip of an X-Acto knife to just lightly scratch out the paint down to the white paper. I want to scratch out a little reflection in the bird's eye where I see it. If you use this technique and your paper is not completely bone dry, uh, it won't work at all. You'll kind of tear your paper up and, and the color will bleed right back into the area that you tried to scratch out. Okay, let's see. I think just a little bit more. Use a gentle but firm touch when you're doing this. All right, it's a cerulean warbler. What a bird. I love that blue color. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me.